Boston College lands a new commitment for the class of 2023, and it's from a familiar place. And we're going to look at why the ACC is in dangerous position right now in terms of the future of the Power Five conferences. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All of this and more on today's Locked On Boston College. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. Happy Thursday, everyone. I can't believe it's only Thursday. This feels like it should be like Sunday at this point. It's been a long week. Love all you guys, though. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has got you covered with this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So let's kick this off with some good old fashioned recruiting news. Boston, two days or three days out of the four that we've talked about recruiting. I know you guys love it. I'm excited to talk about it here. So on Wednesday, Boston College landed their sixth recruit for the class of 2023. And the name that came up was Brian Sims, a 2023 edge defender from St. Francis in Maryland. Brian Sims had offers from Ole Miss and Penn State, where he visited, and a few smaller schools as well. And, you know, he's a three-star recruit. He's the second edge defender joining Jordan Mayer, who uh, committed last week. Now, this was not a surprise. If you are a premium subscriber on my site, you knew that I had already said this was going to be the dude that came up after Vince Ogabasi did his let's go or whatever, or yes, Lord, or whatever his thing is that he does on Twitter. I knew it was going to be him. Uh, he had just visited Boston College, had a great visit. He committed. Uh, he, had, he did a whole little video. I think that was the reason why it took a little bit of time. He wanted to do one that kind of showcased a few different things about his family. Nice little touch. But... I love it. He's a 6'4 edge defender. He's about 240 pounds. Great size. That's exactly what you want. And he plays for St. Francis Academy. I love players that play for this school. It is a great uh, pipeline for BC. Like, this is exactly what I mean when I say, yeah, it stinks sometimes when you lose the Massachusetts recruits, but if you hit home runs everywhere else, who cares? Getting in at St. Francis Academy, earning their coaches' trust, getting those recruits, you're getting recruits from one of the best programs on the Northeast. The St. Francis Academy is always a top 10 school in terms of uh, national rankings every single year. And for Boston College, this is now three commitments from that school since Jeff Hathley's taken over. C.J. Burton Jr., who has been the star recruit that they've had um, since he started, he was from St. Francis. He kind of opened the door for all of this. And he committed, and then last year, it was originally going to be Jamal Hood, but I don't know, I never got a straight answer what happened there, but he moved on. But Jude Bowery, also from St. Francis Academy, also committed to Boston College. So this is, again, another testament to Azar Abdul-Rahim, Jeff Halfley, and Tem Lokabu. Azar Abdul-Rahim is probably one of the most valuable recruiters Boston College has had in a long time. He... Uh, you know, he and a combination of he and Halfley make get it going after any defensive back, uh, um, you know, favorable for Boston College. BC is looking at some really, really strong cornerbacks, and I'll get into one in just a moment. But their their combination in terms of hitting up places like the DMV, hitting those defensive players up, they're doing an excellent job. And that's on a do over him because he is one of the kings of DMV. The D- District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. That's the DMV. That's the area he recruits. And so he's opened doors that Boston College has not had open. I mean, I I, I don't have the, the historical notes in front of me, but, I, you know, I've covered BC recruiting for a while. I don't remember anyone from St. Francis Academy going here. Now he's got three, and he's got other guys coming as well uh, that are looking at BC. So Darrell Robinson, who is a top uh, running back from Maryland, was just on campus with Sims this week, had a great time, and I think he could be coming back. Um, there's a couple wide receivers. Ryan Manning uh, is another wide receiver. I don't know if he would come to BC, but he's been someone that has an offer. I mean, they offer everyone at the school, and they're getting more and more of those guys on campus. And you're going to start seeing some of the stars of St. Francis Academy. I mean, you got C.J. Burton here. You're going to get to see more as well. Now, as I was saying earlier, this class is interesting. So you got now three defensive linemen. 
I could see them going for four. But zero defensive backs right now. And that's interesting because it seems like the first two classes that Halfley brought in, the first full two classes, 21 and 22, were loaded with defensive backs. At least the first one was. That The second one felt like it was going to be, and it actually wasn't. So you expect them to go for some big names here. And they have been offering some big-time uh, defensive backs in the class of 2022. And one of the biggest that they're looking at is Khalil Ali out of Penasukin, New Jersey. I apologize. I said on Twitter earlier it was Pennsylvania. I thought I saw Penasukin and I, I got it all messed up. Uh, he's a four-star recruit. He's got a ton of offers. He's coming back to Boston College this weekend. Um, and that's a big deal. You know, Ali is one of the best c- commitments, uh, recruits out of the state of New Jersey. He has major offers everywhere. Boston College is going to have their choices at cornerback. They've got a ton of offers of some real, as I said, really solid recruits. It's going to be interesting to see where Halfley looks at what player has what he wants. Because there could be players out there that are higher ranked that he's evaluated that aren't as high as maybe some other guys. So I don't, I, you know, we have Ali coming in. He's a safety. But there might be other safeties out there that he likes better. It's all based on his 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 evaluation of these players. So there's some really good ones out there, and it's going to be fascinating to see who he pushes for uh, in that recruiting portal. But right now, Boston College has six recruits in the class of 2023. You know, no superstars yet. Jaden Skeet and Dottrell Jones, their first two, are probably the highest ranks they have. I've already said Jacoby Robinson's going to be a, a diamond in the rough that they found at quarterback. I love that pick. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to – right now I'm not seeing BC be a – you know, you remember last year it was like, oh, my goodness, they got one of the top ten recruiting classes for, like, the first, like, three months. I don't see them starting off like that. But they're getting guys that they want, and that's all that, that all that matters at this point. Now, in a moment, we're going to step away from Boston College. We're going to look at a bigger level. And I'm going to talk about the ACC, and looking at some of the financial numbers, they could be in some trouble. We'll get into that in just a moment. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because, you know, I wanted a better gut health. I didn't have time to do a lot of other things. And now I've been on it for about three months and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each morning. These athletic greens, this is the good stuff. With AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things that you need to live a nice, healthy life. Now, they have some great stuff that you need to know about them. They support better sleep, sleep, uh, sleep quality and recovery. They support mental clarity and alertness. The one thing with the best thing. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. Tons of people may take some kind of multivitamin. It's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb, and that is AG1. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up additional nutritional insurance. Now, if you're like me, your bracket is absolutely toast. I lost, I mean, on one side of my bracket, it was gone about, you know, by the second weekend. And the other one kind of was on life support until the last weekend. But... I still am enjoying these games because I am using Sat Heroes NCAA single game pick'ems that pit star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on the players you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads, long odds, or fucking props. Sat Hero gives you the advantage resulting in their gamers winning four times more often. Why? Because Stat Hero eliminates the mystery about who or what you're going up against. In addition to their pick'em games, they have dozens of lineups you can comb through to take on head-to-head. This simple, sleek gameplay will have you playing in minutes, and this is what Daily Fantasy is all about. So, right now, head on over to StatHero.com slash LockedOn and use promo code LockedOn for a 100% deposit match. Maybe you want to take the UNC and Duke game, kind of look at some of the players in that matchup. That's StatHero.com slash LockedOn. Use promo code LockedOn for a 100% match. That's StatHero.com slash LockedOn, promo code LockedOn. Terms and conditions do apply. This is LockedOn Boston College. AJ Black here. 
thank you for all of you who have listened. And so, I want to send a super thank you to all of you who have subscribed to us on YouTube. We've had a nice new batch of listeners on there, and it means a lot. And we are starting to put some of the interviews up there. I'm starting to reach out to some of the recruits that have committed to Boston College. We had a bunch of them last year. I mean, if you want to know more about Sione Hala or Alex Broom or Noah Clifford, had them all all on the show, and they're all up on YouTube. So you can check out some of the recruits from BC. So just just look up Locked On Boston College on YouTube, and you can find all of those. Now, let's step away from BC for a second and look at the ACC conference in general. Now, you know, the, 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 the terminology right now is the Power Five. It's the ACC, the SEC, the Pac-12, Big 12, and Big 10. But Nicole Auerbach of The Athletic, I've been on her show before, love her, uh, put out an article that, really kind of laid out why things are going to get a little bit sticky for the ACC. Now, they put up, she put up a graph, and you can find it on Twitter, at Nicole Auerbach, that shows where the schools are right now. Now, the, S, the Big Ten makes $57.2 million per team, average payout. The SEC makes $54 million. The Big 12, $40 million. The Pac-12, $34 million, and down in the basement is the ACC with $30 million. Now, doesn't get better. So she made she had this all laid out, and she's assuming that in 2026, there's going to be a 12-team college football expansion. So she kind of plots out what those payouts will look like for the teams once that happens. And it becomes very clear that the ACC is... Big 12 and Pac-12 are in big trouble. By 2029, the SEC will be making $117 million a year for each team. The Big 10 will make $101 million. And then the, dro- the drop-off from those two schools is precipitous as it goes down to $62 million for the Pac-12, $61 million for the ACC, and the poor old Big 12 with $57 million. But those three schools, it's almost dub- less than half of what the SEC is going to make. Now, th- th- with that money, that money is what sustains all the other programs on campus. It's not just pumped into football. The football uh, money goes into all the other, pro- like the softball, rowing, gymnastics if they have it, wrestling. It goes into all those programs. The SEC is going to be flush with cash. And a lot of that has to do with all these new media deals. And the ACC is absolutely hosed with what they're locked into right now. Because right now, they are in a, a deal that is pretty stagnant with ESPN. That's paying them pittance compared to what the SEC and Big 12 are going to be making soon. So how does the ACC save themselves from this? Because they're very close. we're very close from college football becoming a two-conference league. And the Big 12 is in that cute little whatever the heck it was called, the alliance, which means absolutely diddly squat at this point. And it sounds like it's not going to mean anything because one of the conferences, I think the Pac-12 said, they're not doing anything about scheduling. So goodbye. Uh, That was fun last year, right? Well, now you have the SEC and the Big 10 and then everybody else. So the ACC needs to figure out quickly, and this is on Jim Phillips, the new commissioner, how to get this conference back into relevance. And the first thing they need to do is Jim Phillips needs to talk to his lawyers, talk to all the people, all the thinking heads that he has on board and figure out a way to get the heck out of that ESPN deal. Because that right there is what's damaging everything. If they can renegotiate, cancel it, add another team that will force them to renegotiate it, something That would be the best thing for the ACC. They need to be able to get that money. They need to be able to get to the open market again and renegotiate to see if they can get a bigger deal. Maybe Fox will spend more money or another company. Maybe, you know, like think different, like, right? Maybe Amazon or Google or Disney or Disney's ESPN. Um, But, you know, like those kind of companies, something, someone out there will pay for it, but they got to figure out how to get out of that. And I think the golden goose, the white whale, for Jim Phillips is going to be Notre Dame because you get Notre Dame on board immediately. That contract is gone immediately. That makes 
ACC a million times more marketable, a million times, and I'm being a little bit facetious here, they're very, very, very much more marketable and uh, attractive to other, other, pro, um, other media outlets. That will give them more money for their members. So what they need to do, they need to figure out how to get out of that, out of that deal and then go from there. And that's going to be the biggest story for this conference because they're going to be beaten into irrelevancy if they do not figure something out soon. The, the, look at this. I mean, if you look at the graph, it's startling. The differences between the SEC and, and, and the ACC Big 12 and Pac-12. And, you know, back in the day, it sounded like that deal with ESPN was good. You got your ACC network, which you can watch all those, you know, laser games and all that stupid ads that they give you there. But strap in, folks. You know, it's going to take a good mind to get the ACC out of the hole that they're in. And they got to make this happen soon because otherwise a team like Florida State, a team like Clemson is going to see the writing on the wall and they're going to they're going to, you know, reverse tail and head on out if they don't see something happening soon. Now, in a moment, we're going to get into the news of the day. It's one of my favorite segments talking about all the things that have happened for Boston College. Now, this is the time of the year I'm getting myself ready for spring break. You know, I got to get my good old dad bod ready for the beach. And how am I going to do that? With good old Bilt Bars. It almost feels like it's really a resolution at all because I actually enjoy eating them. You know what I really enjoy? Are those puffs. If you haven't tried the puffs yet, you're missing out on one of Bilt Bars' best teaching brands. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar. They are a treat and they're covered in 100% chocolate. Yes, 100% chocolate. I am not kidding. They're good for you and they are delicious. They have some great flavors too for Bilt Bars, including mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time. If you think of a flavor and you think it might be good, they're going to make it and it'll be delicious and it'll be good for you. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black here. Happy Thursday again. And this is our little news segment where we're going to kind of get into all the news things that are going on in BC, uh, the world of Boston College sports. So, the transfer watch, I've, I've, again, saw some folks talking about Gianni Thompson. I mentioned it here as I hadn't seen anything on it. I saw one reporter mention it, but I wasn't going to call him out, but I hadn't see, heard anything. Just to kind of give you an update of where he's at, I saw photos on Boston College Basketball's Instagram account of him working out with the team. So if he's not, if he's in the transfer portal, he's doing something illegal right now. He's not. He's not there yet. As I said before, I've seen him liking all sorts of BC stuff and you know retweeting Makai Ashton Langford and all that good stuff. So he, it looks like right now he's coming back, and that gives BC one transfer portal slot right now and unless something else happens which i mean isn't the worst thing in the world i'd love to see them you know i think the freshmen in themselves are going to be good and if you get gianni thompson playing better those are all improvements that you will have over last year now on the joanna mcnamee front it's still quiet at the time of this recording she's still the boston college edge coach i haven't seen anything about her going anywhere um but i'm not into getting scoops on uh coaching hires and and uh, leavings, it, you know, there's other guys out there that do that kind of stuff. My job is if I find it, I give you my, my, my two cents on that, especially women's basketball. I don't have the connections to that, but I'll let you know when I hear about it, if she is leaving and a nice couple games in a row for BC baseball, who beat a good UConn team on Tuesday at, beat uh Sa- sorry not sacred heart merrimack on thursday they crushed merrimack they were up 16 to 4 won that game and they won against yukon 5 to 3 in addition uh that's two wins but you know it's good to see them beating up on northeast teams and winning these midweek games it's got to kind of translate to the weekend though and we haven't seen that happen yet so i you know you, you they're an acc team they've got to beat acc level programs and they have one win out of nine games against ACC teams. So it's nice to see them beat up and win those games. And, you know, I mean, they they popped Merrimack. Cameron Larry had a grand slam. Uh, you know, big win, you know, whenever you win like that. But let's see how they do against Wake Forest this weekend. And finally, 
Uh, the women's lacrosse team won again. They're the number two team in the country, so they got to keep keep this going. They fell behind two nothing to Dartmouth, and then went on to smoke them. So it was another nice win for the for the women's lacrosse team. Uh, and th- you know they're going to get into more of their ACC tournament uh, ACC schedule coming up again this weekend. Now we are a week away from spring football game, and I will be there on campus for the game. I'll give you all the details on it. Hopefully I'll get to talk to some of the players and the coaching staff after the game. So make sure to check us after on that Monday. We're also going to be heading into the NFL draft season. Mitch Wolf obviously is on on our Monday shows to talk all about the NFL draft. You know, you don't want to miss that because Mitch has some great insight into a lot of these players. We'll talk about the BC players. We'll talk about everything else in between. So you're going to want to hear his thoughts on that as we get closer. And when, when the draft happens, you're going to want to hear our thoughts on each player and where they land in the NFL. Well, thank you all for listening. This is AJ Black. You can follow me on Twitter at AJ Black underscore BC. You can follow the site at BC Bulletin and at Locked on BC is the podcast Twitter account. We've got a lot of social media here. I, I, I like a good amount of social media love, so hit us up there. Speaking of social media love, if you have a question for our mailbag tomorrow, please hit me on any of our social media accounts. DM me, at me, whatever. If you have a question for Friday's show, it's our Mailbag Friday. It's We do this every week. And I'd love to hear some of your thoughts, some of your questions that you have for that show. And I'll make sure if they're appropriate, I'll address as many of them as I can. So hit us up. Love to hear from you. And for those of you who have given us a five-star review on Google and other podcast apps, thank you as well. This is AJ Black. We'll see you all again tomorrow for Friday's episode. Take care, everyone.